Zombie sneak attack are the self-proclaimed worst band in existence, though they usually qualify this statement that they consider themselves to be better than Celine Dion. Creators of the internet glitch grind subgenre of metal, the band's sound can best be described as random bedlam nonsense, a mishmash of horrifying screams, distorted instruments, and random samples. It's not often that a band can lay claim to creating a new genre of music, and then being the only act in this genre for over a decade, with a monopoly on the growing internet glitch grind scene. Although the band is undeniably American, they formed in Batman, a city in the Anatolia region of Turkey near the border of Syria. The original duo that made up Zombie Sneak Attack were the Reverend Horsenuts and the Compiler. The Reverend Horsenuts was originally from Tucson, Arizona. He was a pansexual tweaker with a passion for trying every drug and experiencing every form of sexual debauchery. He wound up in Turkey after a trip across Europe went badly, and he had to flee Greece after befouling a bathhouse. To this day, Horsenuts is wanted in Greece to answer for charges of ritualistically teabagging several local youths and forcing them to eat Whoppers from Burger King, considered a capital crime in Greece. Seeking refuge in a Turkish flophouse in Batman, in the year 2000 he met the compiler, a classically trained musical prodigy who had been driven insane after his parents locked him in a cellar and forced him to listen to every Rolling Stones album back to back. His mind twisted and deranged, the compiler's love of music was twisted by his madness. His attempts to recreate the fabled brown note, which can cause a person to lose control of their bowels, had caused him to be shunned by the classical music community. Some have speculated that in his madness, the compiler believes he is creating beautiful symphonies, but in fact the music he creates is so bizarre and awful that it is considered a hate crime in several international communities. The reasons behind the compiler's presence in Turkey is mostly unknown, though experts have speculated that he believed the city of Batman to be named after the character Batman, and that it was therefore the greatest city on earth, while others believe that he was on a pilgrimage to obtain an instrument capable of producing the brown note. The compiler was composing in his room, using a beat-up electric guitar, several overturned trash cans, and live rats as instruments. The Reverend Horsenuts heard the commotion and kicked in the door to the compiler's room, and the two proceeded to scream Bon Jovi lyrics at each other non-stop, even continuing as they were dragged away by the local authorities. After spending several months in a Turkish prison, the two were released on the condition that they never enter the country of Turkey again. The duo, now inseparable, christened themselves Zombie Sneak Attack and travel to Afghanistan, where in a cave in the northern mountains they wrote and recorded several songs that became their first demo, Incredibly Brutal Torture, which the duo distributed on the streets of Kabul by literally throwing cassette tapes at passerby while screaming zombie sneak attack over and over. Unfortunately, the new form of marketing did not meet with much success, as most people who encountered the group fled in terror. After a run-in with local lore lords, they were once again forced to flee, this time traveling to Israel. Most copies of br incredibly brutal torture were left behind and presumed destroyed by the Taliban, though there is a local urban legend that the demo inspired some of their later activities in Afghanistan. Zombie Sneak Attack found Israel to be a safe haven and spent a few weeks there writing material, but the duo had grown homesick at this point. The Reverend Horsenuts missed his family and drug dealers, and the compiler stated that he wanted to go to a place that had real toilets. So after an enterprising night of male prostitution by the Reverend Horsenuts, they had saved up enough money to finally come home to America. Upon arrival in Tucson, Arizona in 2001, Zombie Sneak Attack finished writing and recording their first full-length album, Scream Till You Die released on the indie label Scatlust Records. The album was more successful than the band could have possibly imagined, selling 11 copies and creating a bustling scene for this new type of music, which the compiler called Internet Glitch Grind. 
Zombie Sneak Attack played several local shows, which have been the cause of several deaths due to a new condition called auditory asphyxiation, in which standing too close to the speakers caused a person to vibrate at a rate that prevented them from breathing. Despite this, the band remained popular and even gained a cult following who saw attending Zombie Sneak Attack shows as being a novel form of suicide. However, whatever local success Zombie Sneak Attack had was paled in comparison by their success online, when their song Smuggling Plums reached number one on the Grindcore charts at mp3.com for a total of 13 minutes. Flushed with success, Zombie Sneak Attack started selling literally tens of records, and before you knew it, Scream Till You Die was the talk of the town in the most high-profile metal community ever, the Unholy Metal Message Board on AOL. Zombie Sneak Attack's success came at a price, however. Success led to the Reverend Horsenuts indulging in his drug habits, and his reputation as a stoner spread far and wide. The compiler's madness also took its toll, as he still believed himself to be creating classical music, and grew increasingly frustrated by the band's inability to book a show at Carnegie Hall. The duo began to argue until one day it came to a head. A huge argument broke out while attempting to write songs for their second album, over whether the toilet paper should be placed on the roll in an overhand or underhand fashion. The argument nearly became physical, and the compiler walked away from the band, insisting that he was going to go solo. After the breakup of Zombie Sneak Attack in 2002, the band's popularity continued to grow, thanks to Horsenut sending tapes to everyone he knew, including a deaf former rapper from Ohio named Death Row Tull, who had released an album under the name Ritta entitled Get That Shit Off The Grill, and a quirky comedian from New York City who went by the name VMX, who was known for his creativity in destroying people completely using only words and gestures. Death Row Toll and VMX became the biggest fans of Zombie Sneak Attack, and convinced Horsenuts to revive the Internet Glitch Grind Act in 2004. Having songs partially written by VMX, and guest vocals from Death Row Toll and other fans, the second album was on its way to being made. It was called The Ballad of Sean Huckabay, and was a concept album chronicling one young pilgrim's journey across America looking for the perfect brand of spray cheese. However, the ambitious second album never came. There were conflicting reasons given for why it was not released. Some claim that despite how cartoonish and unbelievable the character of Sean Huckabee was, that he was actually based on a real person. An anarchist spray cheese aficionado from Virginia, who supposedly threatened legal action against zombie sneak attack. Another story is much simpler, that Horsenut simply lost the tracks due to computer failure and had not backed up the majority of the work he had put into the album. The third reason is the most believable, however, that Horsenut's drug issues and penchant for buggery took center stage in his life, meaning that the second album was doomed from the get-go. Despite this, five tracks in various stages of completion did survive and were released, along with an older track written with the compiler after the release of Scream Till You Die, on an EP entitled Splitting Bitches, The Lost Ballad of Sean Huckabee Demos. After this, Horsenuts seemed deflated and dejected after working hard on a new album that wasn't to be released, and he dealt with this the same way he dealt with anything else. Massive amounts of cocaine, morphine, heroin, and crystal meth along with the attention of young men of loose morals. Horsenuts attempted once more to release another zombie sneak attack album, this one entitled Scenes from a Migraine. However, the album never got past the planning stages, as his increasingly destructive lifestyle and stints in various rehab facilities cut this short. Several more false alarms would happen over the next few years. At one point, Horsenuts claimed that the band was now known as Fook, and would release new material, but none materialized other than a demo of a techno song called Slightly Drugged. The Reverend Horsenuts then tried to break into the hip-hop scene, shortening his name to just Horsenuts, and considering himself a DJ and rap producer. However, the only thing to be released was a repetitive looping beat entitled You Will Dance or You Will Die. 
Zombie sneak attack again seemed poised to fade into obscurity, until the intervention of VMX, one of the band's biggest fans, who had written several of the songs planned for release from the Ballad of Sean Huckabee. VMX traveled around the country collecting tapes and various lost recordings, and managed to find most of the tracks from the previous releases, the album Scream Till You Die and the EP Splitting Bitches, and release them on a greatest hits album entitled All, the very fucking worst of Zombie Sneak Attack. The compilation was released on the newly created South Appleton Records in 2008, and introduced a new generation to internet glitch grind. The album's popularity led to more tracks surfacing, and tapes were sent around the country until they came to to the possession of Death Row Toll, who in 2010 released the definitive collection entitled None, Tits, or Leave. Although the two compilations are very similar, with None having five extra tracks, the creation of None was highly significant due to a chance encounter. While searching the country for tapes, VMX heard rumors that Horsenuts had settled back in Tucson, Arizona, and was currently not in rehab or prison. After the release of None, VMX contacted Death Row Toll and explained the situation, and the two agreed to take a trip to Tucson to discover what became of Horsenuts. The two fans found the disheveled and dangerous-looking Horsenuts, standing in the center of a busy intersection in Tucson, wearing rags and holding a sign that said Sonic Colonic. Believing that Horsenuts was promoting a new album, the duo eagerly approached him and asked him about Sonic Colonic. However, rather than the title of a new zombie sneak attack album, it turned out to be a solicitation for male prostitution. VMX reported that at this point Horsenuts had lost all of his teeth and was barely understandable and Death Row Toll claimed that the sight made him sick to his stomach, and after he vomited, Horsenuts merely looked at him and said, You gonna eat that? After this incident, Horsenuts spent more time in rehab in prison, and later vowed to get himself clean. It is rumored that he now shares an intimate relationship with a young intersexual who lives in a retirement home, and rumors of him being spotted playing shuffleboard are rampant to this day. However, Death Row Toll decided that this would not be the inglorious end of Zombie Sneak Attack, as Horsenuts was a shell of his former self, and the compiler had been missing for years, with the last known sighting of him being in a forest in Montana attempting to conduct a symphony of grizzly bears. Death Row Toll and VMX decided to take the reins of Zombie Sneak Attack, and immediately started working on new material. The duo found working together to be monumentally easy and natural, and started pumping out songs at a rapid rate. To both promote the new material and make people aware of the older material, VMX released a third compilation, this one titled Glass Cats, a ZSA Sampler, which included tracks from the first album, Scream Till You Die, the EP, Splitting Bitches, and even the single Fook Demo, as well as four new tracks. When asked about their goals, Death Row Toll responded that the new album will be out before Duke Nukem Forever, and VMX simply stated, we will make you laugh and puke and cry and scream. However, it didn't end there, as the duo vowed to make up for lost time, and that their working relationship was so good that they would be able to release an album every few months, and their released material would soon eclipse that of the original duo. The second Zombie Sneak Attack album, Lies All Lies, The Resurrection of Zombie Sneak Attack, was finally released to much success, with critics praising the band's homage to the old sound while modernizing it greatly. Due to the influence of VMX, the band's focus shifted slightly more towards comedy, something Death Row Toll also picked up with his famous Defecating on TV suite, which has continued on several new albums. Not to lose any momentum, the band planned to release the third album, Scream Until Daddy Stops, later in the year. However, after finishing the album, VMX promptly stole the tapes from the distributor and released them digitally, as he claimed, ZSA has always been free and always will be. If people want to send us stuff, send Death Row Toll fried chicken and send me Amazon gift cards. Otherwise, just enjoy the music and shut up. Death Row Toll said, You can't stop him. No one can. He'll do this with every single album. 
After Scream Until Daddy Stops, VMX was contacted by the United States government, who claimed that they needed to speak with him immediately. After a meeting with the Joint Chiefs of Staff, VMX revealed that during the raid that killed Osama bin Laden, a surviving copy of Incredibly Brutal Torture had been recovered from his compound. Being the only known copy of the original two-song demo, the government's officials who listened to it found that they didn't want the tape, as it was too brutal for their pretty pink ears. So, they handed it over to the only people who would understand it, Zombie Sneak Attack themselves. VMX and Death Row Tall once again scoured the country for missing tapes, and managed to find two important missing tracks, Zombie Sneak Attack and Scream Till You Die. The last two songs from the first album had finally resurfaced. Along with the two songs recovered from the Middle East, Meat Missile and Skinned Alive with a Cheese Grater, and a new track they had written for the fourth album, they released a new EP entitled Some, Shit We Found in the Crawl Space. After months of traveling, the band had also played several impromptu shows, including one famous show at Shitman's Bar in Tucson, Arizona, the home of the biggest fan base of ZSA fans. It turns out, one fan who was present for the show recorded it using an ancient boombox and promptly turned the tapes over to Zombie Sneak Attack after they were ejected from the bar, claiming, you guys are so much better live. This tape became the band's first live album, Songs from Shitman's Bar. The band then returned home to work hard on the fourth full-length ZSA album, with VMX stating, We're going for a hat trick, three albums released in 2011, and Death Row Toll stating, This will finally prove once and for all our superiority in the internet glitch grind scene. We've released more songs this year than any other internet glitch grind band has done in their entire careers. The fourth album, Sobriety is Hard, was a pointed attack on horse nuts, as his inability to stay away from drugs had poisoned the career of Zombie Sneak Attack, and the new lineup felt that he even managed to stay sober, Zombie Sneak Attack would have had more than one album and an EP in nine years. Almost to punctuate that they could do it, the band released one last release in 2011, a Christmas-themed EP entitled Fuck You, Here's Your Christmas EP, which contained four new holiday-themed tracks, as well as recorded messages from both members of the band. The future looks bright for Zombie Sneak Attack going into 2012. Death Row Toll stated, We have a new album we're working on called Roses Are Red, Violets Are Blue, I'll Fuck You With A Wake. It's our angriest and heaviest work, it will sound like pure, unfocused rage, and it will likely break your speakers and your rectum. VMX stated, 2012 is going to be huge for us, and we have no intention of slowing down. We have enough material to work with to release dozens of albums, and anyone who doesn't like it can kiss my ass. When asked if they would ever visit the city of Batman, Turkey, where Zombie Sneak Attack had originally formed, the duo seemed reluctant. Death Row Toll stated, We're not living in the past. We have a few more old tapes and we'll release them. Actually, look out for a new EP of old songs really soon, probably on New Year's Day. But we have no plans currently to make a pilgrimage to Botman right away. But if we ever did, it probably would make a good venue for a new live album. VMX stated, Going to the Middle East doesn't seem smart, though that is how the band started. Maybe we'll fly over it in a bomber or something and drop tapes on them, sort of a musical strafing. Regardless of their future plans, Zombie Sneak Attack is here to stay, and thus ends the history of Zombie Sneak Attack, at least so far. To end this feature, I give you a cut from their next album, entitled Burger King Sucks. <laughs>
Now, flush.